good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here, and today we have the brand new Tier 10 Techline French Battlecruiser in-game to review for you guys today, in port to review for you guys today, and that is the Marseille. So with the release of update 11.6 a few days ago, the French Battlecruiser tech tree became fully researchable, and the Marseille was released. Before we go any further, however, Big shout out to the channel's Patreons for making this review and all ship reviews possible. These guys donate generously on the Patreon to support the channel and ship reviews. It is the best place to support the channel besides just watching the videos and streams. I'm not a CC nor affiliated with Wargaming in any way, shape, or form. So all these ship reviews, I have to purchase the ships myself or research the ships myself. The case here of the Marseille and the Patreons make that much, much easier. So big thank you to those guys, whose name should have appeared up on screen right there a few seconds. And now, the Marseille. As always, with the, especially with these newer ships, even these newer Techline ships, look at all the details on the ship that the art department and the modeling guys put on. It is beautiful. The ship is beautifully rendered. It looks really good in the sliding too, in the super foggy uh, London port. There is a helicopter flying overhead, speaking of smog. But anyway, so the Marseille, the Tier 10 French Battle Cruiser. I've seen quite a few of these in-game. Haven't taken mine out just yet. Been too busy playing the Duncan uh, still. But yeah, let's take a look at this thing and see how she performs today. Alright, so starting off with... Uh, oh yeah, uh, no commander modules, no economic bonuses. What? They have, are they are applied? Oh yeah, I got the... Um, I did pick up the permanent economic bonus for the ship. So that one has been applied, um, but yeah, no commander, no module skills, no commander skills, no commander skills, nor modules have been equipped. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Marseille. Alright, so for its armor, she has a 25mm bow, that's pretty decent compared to the other French cruisers. Uh, 30mm upper belt, a 210mm main belt, 200mm lower belt, and her torpedo protection is 30 as well. Uh, 25mm stern, 25mm stern deck, I'm assuming 25mm bow deck, yep. Midsection is 36, that's a little nicer, but still larger caliber HE is going to go right through that. Um, Morgan did state that these whole French battle cruisers uh, weaknesses were HE, and that's very prevalent here with the armor. I mean, you know, giant slotted 30mm on the side, 25mm bow. You're going to see a lot of ships at tier 10 that can just pin this even without IFHE. And her Citadel is... Ooh. Almost below the waterline? Looks like it's just at the waterline. And you do have this turtleback protection coming down on top of it. So that is nice. Saxophone guy still absolutely added in the London port. Okay, so it looks like it'll be pretty well protected against cruisers. But, of course, anything with large guns looks at you and you're going to fill it. But it is still French armor, so there's a good chance for some trolliness to go on there with uh, some of the internal armor bits. Survivability, she has 66,950 hit points. Very healthy for a cruiser. Keep in mind, this is in a cruiser slot, not a battleship slot, like the uh, Royal Navy and um, German battle cruisers. So that is a very healthy cruiser that's around a Tier 8 battleship's HP pool. 25% torpedo damage reduction, though, which isn't fantastic. But I mean, for a cruiser, it's good. For a cruiser, it's good. But a, if you're looking at this like a battle cruiser battleship, then it's not that great. But again, it's in a cruiser slot. So you get 3x3, three three, not quad guns, but triple guns of the 330mm caliber. These reload in 24 second space, have a 36 second 180 time, maximum dispersion 213 meters at 19.6 kilometers. HE does a maximum damage of 4,800, 35% chance of causing a fire on target per shell, 55 millimeters of HE pin, and 85 meters a second initial velocity for the HE shells. AP shells have a maximum damage of 9,700, and come out the tube at 870 meters a second. That's uh, quite nice, nice fast shells here. Of course, it's the French shells, they're always pretty fast. Um, if it's like the other ships in the line, she should have some pretty flat shell arcs too, which should make this ship fairly comfortable shooting at other cruisers and even DDs when you need to, which is always good. And of course, it's also great for punching through battleship armor at close range. That combination of 
high velocity and flat shell arcs. So, yeah. And they're also, of course, in the uh, Baguette Nelson configuration. Um, I don't know if turret number two can 360. I haven't taken the ship into battle yet, but if that can, that's going to be a nice plus for the Marseille here. And, yeah. I am surprised they didn't go with the quad turrets. I mean, obviously, that would give this ship 12 guns in the front. That might have been a little bit too much, honestly, but um, 9 guns in the front is pretty nice. Secondary guns, you got 1,239mm guns. And then you also have 1,239mm triple guns here. Uh, the secondaries, you're loading 6.5 seconds, have a maximum range of 8.3 kilometers, maximum damage of 2,000. And they have a 10% chance of causing a fire on the target, 23 millimeters of HE pin, and they those come up the tubes at 840 meters a second. And it's the same for the triples. They're just in a triple turret. Now that these ships are supposed to have, you know, good secondaries with good range, good reload, and good accuracy, but from where we've seen with the rest of the line, it's not really well, you can't really build into it anyway, because it's in the cruiser slot. But yeah. They don't really do too, too much. A defense is an A rating of 83. You get 18 by 2 of the 20 millimeter Orlikens, 18 by 2 of the 40 millimeter Beaufort. I'm sorry, 8 by 2 of the 40 millimeter, 40 millimeter Beaufort. I wish it was 18 by 2. 2 by 4 of the 40 millimeter Bo of the quad Beauforts. 6 by 2 of the 139s. And 4 by 3 of the 139s as well. So all the secondaries are dual purpose, which is nice. And get you that nice 83 rating here for AA. We'll see how that performs though in game. Top speed base of 33 knots. That's pretty nice. Turning circle of 770 meters and a rudder shift time of 14.5 seconds. That's a pretty long rudder shift time, but this is again a very large cruiser. A consumer of 14.3 base. Okay, that's um, not terrible. It's should be able to get down pretty low once you get the modules into it which speaking of that let's go look at her consumables so she gets a reload booster which of course cuts the reload time down in half you get three charges of a repair party base 334 hp per second your choice of engine boost or fighter i mean why would you pick fighter over engine boost <laughs> it's the whole point of the french well tech line essentially well tech tree essentially Hydro or DFAA, ooh. And I'll probably stick with Hydro though, but you do have some nice choices here. You can mount the fighter if you want. You can, of course, take DFAA if you want, if you're having a bad day with carriers. But um, I'm probably just gonna leave it at it as is right here. Alrighty, I'm gonna go ahead and build into this with a commander and modules. And I'll meet you guys right back here once that is complete. Alrighty, for the build, I went with, for the modules, main armaments mod 1, keep those turrets in the fight. This reduces the chance of those turrets being knocked out or incapacitated. Then I went with damage con mod 1, because the ship's weakness is HG, and a lot of it's going to be slung at you, so cutting the chance of getting a fire going is very nice, and this reduces that by 5%. Then with aiming systems mod 1 to rein in that dispersion, this decreases dispersion by 7%. Then I went with Damage Con Mod 2 to cut down the burn time of the ship by 15%. Then we went with Consumant Mod 1 to take that Consumant range and get it down as low as possible. And then I went with Main Battery Mod 3 to further reduce the reload time on the guns. I was debating taking the range mod, but we'll see how we can work with a stealth and reload build first. Then I might swap that out later on. And for the Commander build, we went with... Abignon here and I first took um, gun feeder here because this will allow you to swap back and forth between AP and HE which both are very viable on these ships from what we've seen with the breast then I went ahead and I took demolition expert just because I needed a, a, two, a, a two point skill to go on and of course getting your fire chance up on a ship that has pretty good reload time and that will need to be using HE a lot to deal with uh, battleships and heavily armored cruisers is a good idea in my mind. Then I would take adrenaline rush and then concealment. Came back around and grabbed grease the gears to get that tur turret traverse speed up in case we have to start running. We don't have any turrets in the rear, so I want the turrets to be able to swing around as fast as possible. Then I went back and took survivability expert, gives you a 500. Uh, HP increase per tier, and we're at tier 10, so it's a pretty significant boost. 
Uh, then went back and took heavy AP shells. This is free damage, 5% boost to your AP shells damage. And then superintendent. And then you can take your choice of, well, after that, you are just left with, with last stand to keep that uh, modules in the fight. Well, keep your engine and steering gears in the fight and cut down on your module restoration even more. All right, so that's my build here. I'm going to go ahead and take it in the battle. And, oh, I should show you what those that, that does to this ship first, shouldn't I? So, for the uh, survivability, we're now up to tier 9 battleship levels of health with 71,950 HP. And for the guns, they now have a 21 second reload time, a 36 second 180 time, a maximum dispersion of 198 meters at 19.6 kilometers, which sounds pretty nice. Again, we'll see how that works in game. Uh, the AP now does 10,185 maximum damage. And then the um, concealment's down to 11.6 kilometers now, which is very nice, very sneaky for a ship this large. And then the ship speed is up to 34.7 knots with the speed flag. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and go into battle and see how the Marseille does. All right, guys, voiceover Mount Batten here. I apologize about that ruckus you might have heard in the port section. Uh, the air conditioning in my house broke in early May and they weren't able to come fix it until, well, now, the day of recording, which is July 15th. So that's right, from May through now, we've had no air conditioning in this house. So, yeah, sorry about that, but I would like it to no longer be 90 degrees inside anymore. But anyway, the Marseille, Marseille, however you say this ship's name, how is she? Well, I can tell after playing her for uh, quite some time, Today, she's quite good. She's very good. This is one of the uh, better tier 10 premiums, uh, well, <laughs> premiums, tier 10 cruisers. In my mind, there's a lot of competition at tier 10 for uh, cruisers. I mean, some nations like the United States and uh, the Soviet Union are pushing five or six um, tier 10 cruisers. So, yeah, there's a lot of variety there in the cruiser slot. And this is, I think, one of the better ones out right now. I think it is worth the grind. It plays, I mean, if, you, if you've seen the breast, played the breast beforehand, it's just more of that. But, of course, you have uh, one more gun. Now, there are some ups and downs of the ship. We're going to go through that as we go through um, her characteristics now that I have played her. So, um, her armor. The armor is... It's interesting. It's, it's very interesting indeed. Because the way that the guns are set up, you would um, think that this ship would be good for bow tanking, of course, like the, uh, the, the, the Richelieu or the Jean Bar, or any ship with all of its guns in the front of the ship. But just like the breast, that's not how the ship is meant to be played. What's actually um, a pretty effective tactic is to angle and try to bait them into shooting at your main armor belt. I mean, main armor belt is thick enough to well to to, uh, to where when it is angled, it will bounce anything that is thrown at it. So if you stay sharply angled enough to the enemy team, and you entice them to shoot at your armor belt with AP, that's the way to go in this thing. Because if they shoot at you with HE, they're probably going to be doing um, consistent damage to you, thanks to the ship being coated in 30 millimeter uh, 30 millimeters or below armor um it is very true that this ship's weakness is he not only from fires but again the fact that you know most tier 10 ships will be able to pin just about every part of your ship with he so you have to keep that in mind when you are playing this ship but yes in the right situation if you can stay angled entice the enemy to shoot ap at you you'll be surviving for quite some time now, another big, big factor affecting her survivability is her maneuverability she is a very quick ship once you have her kitted out, once you have the speed flag on and that engine boost too. That engine boost is fantastic. It gives you a 20% boost to your speed for 180 seconds, which um, the speed on, on the Marseille, it gets you into trouble, but it also gets you out of trouble pretty quick. I had several matches where, uh, you know, I'm used to playing either large cruisers that aren't this fast or, or battleships. So uh, I don't think anything of, you know, going at flank speed for the entire time. And that can get you spotted a little bit early. But thanks, thankfully, the speed can also get you out of that situation, too. But if you pay, to, uh, pay attention to your speed, use it to your advantage. Use it to engage, disengage. It's a great, great, great characteristic of this ship. Um... And there's plenty of matches, and I had uh, Abignon on here too, and he has his special commander trait where once you get past um, 
was it two million potential damage you get a, a an eight percent boost to your speed and th there was barely a match that i didn't get past two million potential damage um because new ship youtuber in new ship must shoot new ship and wow this ship is great at dodging shells but unfortunately uh the armor is what it is and when you do get a hit and it does pin your armor uh, you, you do get chunked pretty easily in this ship um but yeah it's a great ship for its maneuverability it's very fast very good at getting on a flank running down that flank finding the sides of the enemy ships and then blapping them with your guns so speaking about the guns after i went out of order and talked about survivability and the maneuverability but eh, whatever the guns are great um the dispersion can be quite trolly especially for cruisers but i mean again it is 330 millimeter guns on a cruiser so i think that's pretty forgivable plus with the reload uh, module you do have a 21 second reload time which is really nice and the ap on these guns it, it's fantastic especially if you catch a cruiser that isn't paying attention and either get them the right angle or if it's a heavy cruiser with enough armor for your shells to arm on you're going to do like 22k to them easily if those shells arm and hit their citadel it's fantastic and against battleships too that are broadside to you and even from the edge of the marseilles range i was chunking like yamato's musashis for easily for like 18 15k just arming on their upper belt armor the guns are fantastic on this ship um the turrets are a little sluggish for how maneuverable this ship is now granted i do have the reload module on with that debuff to the turrets rotation time but i do also have grease the gears to kind of counteract that um it's true if you weren't running the reload module and the range instead your turrets would be a little bit more maneuverable it would probably keep up with the ship a little bit better but i think this is probably the most optimal at least module build for the ship except maybe slotting out one of the damage con mods for the um acceleration mod maybe but yeah the turrets are a little sluggish when you really need to maneuver especially when it comes to um trying to dodge shells coming in at you your, your turrets are going to be able to be on target turret number two by the way does 360 and that is very cool i do like that um the gun angles are pretty nice the big downside to not having the quad guns is that when you can only get your front two guns on target you do only have six guns to bear which is frustrating especially considering the tier 9 you can bring eight guns to bear in a situation when you could only get the front two turrets on target granted the breast only had two turrets but um the trade-off for getting the extra gun is that in many situations you can't use three of your guns at once but the angles are pretty good to where you can quickly snap that third turret out fire it then get back steeply angled to whatever it is you are shooting at so that's not too big of a deal but it, it, it is a thing all right um so the he is also pretty good in this ship um as far as what ammo to use if you're shooting at like dds or steeply angled battleships of course keep he loaded most cruisers, you're going to want to keep AP loaded. Uh, light cruisers, especially if they're trying to angle, uh, definitely keep AP loaded because you will more than likely blap them unless you're unlucky enough to actually hit their main battery belt. Uh, but of course, you run something like Stalingrad or some of the super cruisers and such, of course, then you won't, you're going to want to use HE. Either way, the HE and the AP performance are very good on the ship and you can get by uh, using both. But again, optimally, HE at angled targets or steeply angled targets or bow in battleships. AP at anything that shows you their side it's nice it's very nice if you're used to french ap you know what i'm talking about here so big ups there for the shell types both the ap and he no no slouch in either department um a a is without dfaa it was there it annoyed the cv a little bit but yeah nothing spectacular i'm sure if you run dfaa of course then that's going to really push the AA, the aa performance up and over it's decent enough to where if you're with a ship or two the cv won't really have too many planes coming back uh, but especially if you run dfaa you will of course be taking more planes out but definitely not an aa ship maneuverability we've already spoke about that in the uh when I was talking about the armor, but yeah, 34.7 knot space, 20% speed boost on top of that, uh, 40.5 second rudder shift time, didn't feel as sluggish as I thought it was, I guess, again, 
uh, I was looking at it from a different mindset, but 14.5 second rudder shift time base isn't really that bad. Um, you could build into the rudder mod and then have a really maneuverable ship there, but I think that's more than satisfactory. Concealment, 11 by 6 kilometer concealment, that, that is absolutely great in the ship. That with the speed and the rate of fire of these guns, you can just, again, pick and choose who you want to fight, run away from the rest. It's a fantastic combination on this ship. Alright, so the Marseille. Overall, I would give this ship uh, an 8, ooh, almost a 9, like 8.5 out of 10 for the Marseille here. Um, the only reason it's not a 9 is because the armor, it's, it's French armor. You know, half the time, you're going to get hit in the broadside by an 18-inch shell, and you're going to get, like, 2k damage. Then the other half of the time, you're going to get hit in the stern by, like, uh, um... Well, actually, funnily enough, it was mostly the uh, other French cruisers for me, like the Brest, that would tap the stern of my ship and suddenly I'd, they'd send it on me. You know, it's the French troll armor. If it had a more solid armor scheme that uh, performed more consistently, it would probably be a 9, but it's a, it's an 8 for me, 8.5 out of 10 for me. Uh, the, the, the pros being a fantastic 330mm French guns, good velocity, good shell arcs, um, good reload time makes up for the dispersion. Dispersion again can be wonky, but with a 20 second reload, with the reload booster, you ain't got to really worry about that because it's okay. Had a wonky salvo there, no worries. Pop the reload booster, 10 seconds, you got another uh, nine shells going down range. Um, like the ship is very fast. The armor is good enough to wear it again. Like if you're angled and they shoot your main battery, your main battery belt, your main belt, you will bounce. But again, it's still kind of trolly, so I'm not sure if that's a pro or a con or just kind of a and in between at the, at the moment. But the cons being that you do have that third turret hidden behind turret number two. So if you want to get that out, you do have to show a little bit too much skin. And that can get you in trouble uh, sometimes. And that in most other cases, you're stuck with just six guns on the front of your ship. And she's absolutely coated in 30 millimeter and below armor in most places on the ship. So you are very susceptible to... HE spam. Again, not only like the fires that are going to be a threat to you because you do have a battleship burn time on this ship, but again, just the sheer pins you're going to be eating from HE. But yeah, other than that, this ship is really fantastic. I really like her. I'm probably going to be playing her a lot in randoms and even on the stream tonight then, because I'm recording this on a Friday evening. But it's a wonderful tech line ship, one that's definitely, in my opinion, worth grinding out. So guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. We're on our way to 40,000 subscribers, and I can't thank you guys enough for that. You know, you guys have a wonderful Saturday. Have a wonderful weekend. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.